Tanya. I'm here in Ottawa. I work for Gripe Digital. And today we're going to talk about five ways, five concrete ways to engage your members with your member portal. Okay, so uh, let's let's jump right in. If at any time you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. You're welcome to come on mic. We're a small crowd today, so we can be a little bit informal. I'd love to hear from you and uh, we'll check in with you um, as, as, we, as we go on. So what we're gonna learn today is the role that your, import, your member portal is gonna play as a member of your team, right? So your member portal is not like a tool that you use, but it's really a member of your team to deliver um, membership benefits and that membership experience to your members. We wanna define your next goal for your member portal. This is really part of what we do here. And uh, Anita and Christina already heard this in the last webinar, but I'll just repeat it, which is, it's very easy for someone to come in and say, you need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G and put a price tag on it. But we really understand um, the association uh, ecosystem that you guys live in, where it is, you know, grant writing and all kinds of, oops, I've let somebody in here. How do I let them in? There we go. But we really do have a limited budget and more than budget is time, right? We're short staffed. And we really want to help you decide what's going to be the next changes you can do that are most effective for you um, to really grow and scale your membership. And we really want to talk about those key, key pillars to drive member engagement and member retention. Okay, so I'll just welcome, somebody showed up here, I want to welcome them. Hi there, welcome. I'm Rania. So I want to ask everybody before we begin, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your member engagement? Anybody feeling brave? You can share, you can put in the chat. Um, you can, um, one second here, let me move you guys over here so I can see you. Anybody wants to have a sense of how happy you are with your member engagement? Anything you want to change? Mm -hmm. But yeah, people, I see someone in the chat here, five. Okay, five, that's fair, somewhere in the middle. That's probably why we're all here. We're all here to learn something. Um, and we asked this question last time, we'll ask it again. It's always important to know where we are on our path, how, where we want to go and helping to create smart goals so we can get there. And we wanna ask ourselves, how much of a difference could your association make if your retention rates increased? And with those extra members and extra dollars and ex larger community, how much more of a difference could you make in advocacy and benefits and experience for your members? So this is the goal and we're gonna help you get there. So a little bit of us today, um, I'm Rania Soroka here in Ottawa, Rania Francoeur actually, my maiden name. Um, we build at Gripe Digital member portals for association. There are all sorts of you know, products out there that build member portals. Our specialization really is in association membership, that nonprofit space, understanding the tempo of nonprofit and keeping your members engaged, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's elusive, it's hard to do, it's not an exact science, but we really work with you to understand your members, your audience, their goals, your resources, and what we can realistically deliver um, and find a niche for you that you are indispensable to your members. And here are some of our clients. So what percentage of members do you lose every year? I ask this to our clients, uh, all of our prospects, people who come to us for workshops, we always ask them, they always fall into two camps. Either they don't want to tell us because frankly, they're here because they do need help with their engagement and their numbers are very low. Sometimes it's as low as 50%, 40% retention rate. Um, and oftentimes people say to us, I don't know. I don't really have the capacity. I don't really know how to track that well. So we can help you on both ends. But if anybody wants to share, yeah, members not engage, Abdul says. So yeah, this is, this is why we're here. We're going to help you get those numbers up. So really having a sense of, the members that we lose is really important because it's a real wake up call because it costs in dollars 10 times more to um, attract new members than to keep your existing members happy and keep them around. So it's really important that we want to um, decrease our member churn. It'll save our dollars and help us scale. Pardon me here, let me jump back. My mouse is acting up on me, one second. One second, let me go back here. Yeah, pardon me, Oops, a little bit of jumping here. And here, the tech question, we're in a tech world, we're all on lots of platforms. How much time does your staff spend on multiple software platforms performing tasks that can be automated? Okay, so this is really a question of like awareness and I'm not a developer and I'm sure we're all hearing every day about different apps and different technologies that do different things. But sometimes there's a lot of the tasks that we do that can be automated 
and using your member portal, which is your main touch point with your members to automate those tasks and those routine tasks that you do with your members is a great way to save time for you. So we really see this like symbiotic relationship where when you improve the member experience for your members by creating automations for them to have independence through the member portal, it really saves your, your team a lot of time to do more strategic, uh, more impactful work. So the common issues associations face around engagement is that members are not fully engaged. They're signing up, they want to show up, they paid their dollars, but then they're not really engaging in what we have to offer. So we have to figure this out. Why is that? And that members do not use your benefits. You have benefits, you've created them, they're valuable, you put time into them. Why aren't they using the benefits? And members are oftentimes not aware of your benefits, right? I see this all the time with our clients. When people leave, they don't know, um, they often don't even know what the benefits are. They didn't bump into them, they weren't explained to them, they didn't know how to use them. Welcome to anybody who's arriving a little bit late. We were happy you're here. We want to figure out how we can bridge this gap to make sure that your members know what your member benefits are so that they use them because members who use them are more likely to stick around. Is this sounding familiar? We're all, we're, all, we're all comfortable? Thumbs up from everybody? Okay, member experience could be improved. This is, let me know if this rings true for you. If I'm off base, I really would love to hear from you and customize this webinar for you. Thanks, Nita, for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. That oftentimes uh, when we ask the members or the LAPS members why you didn't stick around, why aren't you engaged, oftentimes we hear that the services are difficult to find, okay, especially if you do not have a member portal, especially if your benefits are not in your member portal or they're not well um, structured or labeled, hard to find. It's difficult to find them, okay, so if you're sending links in emails or newsletters, people want to be able to find the content when they want to find it and when they're interested in finding it. And often find, we, we find that services are difficult to use. And it might be hard for internally your staff to perceive this because you're so close to it and you're familiar to it. But oftentimes there can be a lot of hiccups along the way, along the user journey, as we say, we're actually having a webinar about user journeys again uh, next month. Um, we can, we'll welcome you back there uh, again, if you'd like to hear about that. But um, we find that you know, if forms are long, if they're complicated, if you have to contact someone and wait to hear back, if it, there's a approval process, there's a delay, they don't know what to expect. Oftentimes it can be hard to interact with them. And then we have this idea of accessibility. So when people think about accessibility, they often think about like extreme examples of people having needs, but really there's all sorts of people in the middle. We have, you know, 10% of males being colorblind and 50% of people over the age of 50 needing glasses. You know, if that text on your website is not user friendly, if it's too small to read, if the color contrast of your buttons and links isn't obvious, oftentimes you can be creating stumbling blocks for users to engage who want to engage without realizing this. So part of the services we offer is sort of looking over what you have and seeing are there any quick easy fixes to make this user experience really pop and really obvious um, to your members so that they feel they can navigate it independently. So to recap what we've learned so far, oh, I have a little comp out oh, there. Um, to recap is that inefficiency is expensive, right? So when members are frustrated, when they cannot engage when they want to, when they cannot find the benefits when they want to, um, when things are not automated, it's expensive, we're losing members and we're costing us 10 times as much to find others. And the solution really is a member portal, a place where members can go when they are interested in connecting with you when they are interested in connecting with their association, when they're interested in professional development, when they're interested in updates, um, tools, community, it's much easier than you know sending emails or sending texts or hoping that they find you other ways or waiting for you know infrequent events. But having a place where they can go on demand is really important. And some of the key benefits that we see is this really, really reduces the cost of human touch. We've had clients where when they build a member portal, they will reduce as much as one, two, three staff members, entire staff members, which is, which is not to say we're in the business of wanting to put anybody out of a job. But the idea is that you can use your staff time so much better to um, you know, mar market your membership, uh, create better benefits, wor work with partners, advocacy, all these sort of more interesting things than like uh, problem solving tech issues for your, for your members who can't easily find things, right? And we want to improve and automate that automated process. Not only does this save um, human touch time, but it also eliminates human error. 
So you create um, a more efficient uh, streamlined process for the users as well. And we want to uh, provide that inclusive user friendly experience right where everybody, no matter where they are geographically or their ability people with more of a range of needs can all access your website. Um, well, any questions so far we're holding tight. We're doing good Okay, no news is good news i'm going with that. So this is a question I want to address because. I get this every single time whenever we ask people to submit in advance their questions on this topic they always I have people asking oh there's a question in the cloud here from from uh, uh, Carissa oh I don't oh here unable to have single sign on for all association related products um let's talk about this a little bit more later I'd, I'd be happy to troubleshoot this with you so I get every single webinar, people say, why do I need a member portal? I'm coming, I'm curious, I'm ready to learn, but why do I need this? And this is such an interesting question for me because the audience for your website is a different audience than your member portal. Your member portal is your members. Your member portal is a place, it says right here, to deliver the services and benefits offered by your association to members. This is really where you justify your membership costs. You're providing a gated experience, gated content. You're a paying member, this is what you get. Unless you're really relying on your membership um, dues to be really for like uh, altruistic uh, purposes, you know, like it's going for, for a good cause. That, that's cute, but it's not necessarily um, gonna keep people in the long term year after year, unless you're really offering benefits to members. Whereas your website, on the other hand, this is public facing, this is your storefront. This is your storefront for people who are curious about you, your prospects, and the messaging on both of these is very different, right? So um, a lot of our clients come to us because they have this very complicated site map where their member content is intertwined with their website, and they see a tremendous churn rate on, on their members because all their member content is available publicly on their public website. And the members have to ask themselves, why did I become a member if this is all publicly available? So um, determining, what kind of content to go on your portal and website is something worth discussing. We're happy to make a meeting with you and talk about it with you, but we really wanna create that gated experience and then save the website for marketing messaging. Join us, join us and explain the value of what you offer versus the portal, which is where you deliver that value. Is this making sense for everybody? Okay. Um, right, so separating these websites, your website from your member portal, they really will have separate URLs. They're separate entities. They can be designed differently. They can link back and forth. But the real, one of the amazing perks of having them separate is that um, if you need to update one of them, if you if, if, if one of them is older than the other, if one of them needs updates, or uh, oftentimes you're gonna revisit your public facing website, the marketing aspects as trends change, as the public changes. I mean, just look at COVID. None of the content on our websites now looks like it did two years ago because the whole message around COVID is different. Is different. So whereas you wouldn't need to change that marketing messaging on your portal. So it, it sort of makes for easier maintenance, easier upkeep, keep easier changes, easier partnerships, everything else. We sort of split these two up. So um, in terms of the types of content you have on your website, we sort of bucket them into three groups. We get into this in more detail in our um, Grow Your Association with a customized uh, member, uh, member portal, which is coming up in a couple of months. Uh, keep visiting our uh, events page for that, our webinar page for that. But for now, I'm gonna talk, just, just in broad strokes, strokes, we sort of have our operational level of the member portal. This is sort of where you wanna give your members independence to renew, to download their invoices, or get receipts, um, you know, donate, uh, update their address, update their email address. Your team should be doing none of this stuff, none of it. If you guys are doing this stuff, please, we're here to help you. We do not want your staff time doing things that are so easily automated, like changing their, um, you know, uh, mailing uh, preferences or updating their profiles, anything like that, that really should be in their hands. And it's in their hands because it empowers them. It empowers them. They should feel uh, like they're in the driver's seat. And then it also saves up time from your staff. The second um, part of the pyramid here, um, we call it the growth area. This is really where you offer your benefits. This is really where you have your, your store of benefits, your bank, your catalog, catalog of benefits. 
um, where they can browse them really easily. It's very easy to understand what they are. I'm actually going to show you uh, in, in one of our client portals, like how this is actualized. And then at the top end here, this is really where we want our members to be. This is the dream, what we call agency or self-actualization. This is where they become um, proud members, engaged members, and um, participating members where they feel um, like they're people are sharing resources, they're volunteering on committees, they're creating opportunities. Um, there's all sorts of things for them to do here. So now not everybody has the personality, appetite or time to be at this level. And that will really depend on like the life cycle of your member in their personal life and also in their professional life. Right? People are at different stages and when they have more time to give and more motivation to give and more hunger. Um, so the goal is not, you're not going to see all members here at the same time, but you have to provide opportunity where they can get here and can feel very empowered. Any questions about the structure here? Any wheels turning about areas where we can uh, improve our portal possibly? Happy to hear from you. Oh, I have a little note here. Ephraim, we would like to see our members able to view their online statements real time from QuickBooks through the portal. Yeah, that's great. We do this with our clients all the time. Absolutely. We want them to be able to rather than email you and say, send me my receipt. I lost it in the previous email or I deleted it. Yeah, this is absolutely true. We want them to be able to um, uh, to, to go in there and just find it themselves. That's a great point. Moving on. Um, this is really before I go forward with my suggestions. I want you guys to know that these are five suggestions and they are, you know, um, hopefully able to be applied to you. But as you, as I present them to you and as I give examples, I don't want you just to make a list of my examples. I really want you to keep in mind your membership and what's valuable to them. Because ultimately the way we're going to engage our members, the way we're going to engage with anybody in our lives outside of our association and particularly with our members is by providing content that is valuable to them and benefits that are valuable to them. And I often, you know, sort of, I, I challenge my clients um, to, and my workshop clients, I challenge them to ask, when you list out your benefits, are these really benefits or are they, you know, a conglomerate of things that we call benefits, right? So if they're not an active benefit, helping your members professionally and personally, we have to really question if this is really the right place for it to be here. And we can help you troubleshoot that. Moving on, moving on. Tip number one, we wanna understand the role of your member portal. I hinted to this at the beginning, and this is sort of more conceptual, but it's really, really important because we wanna put the horse before the cart. Before we take off and um, execute, we really wanna have strategy in mind. There has to be a good balance of both. And we really have to ask ourselves, what do we want this portal to be? What do our members want? We do not want to spend money and time investing in a product that's really auxiliary to what our, our, our clients want. What I really would love to hear from you. We can, this is what I do with my workshop clients all day and night. Um, but really, we want to find out what role does it play? And given your resources and your capacity right now, how can we create that roadmap to scale the portal so that your members continue to see added value, added benefits, which doesn't mean you're constantly adding new benefits. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, the questions are always about that, about how often we add benefits, but really it's about making sure that it's a valuable experience for your members. So to get started with this, I want to encourage you to take inventory of the features in your portal. So just as an example here, I sort of have like a, an example, you might have membership registration already there. You might have renewals. You might have payment receipts is what Ephraim said. Um, yeah, you might have other things there and you might think, you know what, I really do want to build out uh, trainings. I really do want to build out more video content. I want a discussion forum or other uh, volunteer opportunities or job boards. I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of what your members want, right? But we really want to think, you know, what do I have and, and where are the gaps? What gaps can I fill in? And, and always keep, you know, one foot in reality, which is what's realistic. What can I buy? What, what can I realistically do and create a calendar that I have time to pull off? This is more important. Uh, I always say done is better than perfect, right? So getting it done, getting, getting content up there, an opportunity is important. Okay. So number two, this is, uh, comes up all the time with our clients, which is they're very, very interested in social media. How do I get engagement on social media? How do I get people there? And I ask them, you know, 
what is the value here? What is the goal? We call social media likes and clicks uh, vanity, vanity uh, metrics, right? Because we really have to ask ourselves, is the social media engagement really converting financially? And if it's not converting financially, we sort of have to challenge ourselves and ask, what are, what are we doing here? What is the goal, right? Are we in, are we down the, the vanity, you know, fame, fame, fame hungry, you know, are we, are we getting distracted? Because really what we want is to create a community behind your gated member portal, which is paid. If social media is free, what, what would drive them to become paid members? So we want to, when we use, um, we want to drive traffic to the portal. So when we use an email and say, hey, we have a new training. Hey, we have a new uh, event. We have a new announcement. Visit the portal to find out. We want to drive those people to the portal where they are more likely to browse and explore. Pardon me here, what's happening over here? And, um, and connect with the members, connect with benefits. If you just have an email, and many of my clients do this and they don't realize the mistake they're doing. They send an email and it says in there, um, oh, click this link to watch this video. Hmm, that's a problem there. We have to say, click this link to access the portal to watch the video, right? And, and or it'll say, click this um, on social media. They'll say, oh, here, read this new blog entry about this, whatever. We don't want that blog entry on social media. We want the teaser to say, hey, new blog post, click to read it on the portal. Okay, so by showing that you have gated content on the regular and that the portal is the place to be, this is how you justify membership and increase your chances of renewal. Is this making sense? Is this clicking for you guys? Oh, yes, Troy, love it! Exclamation mark, a man after my own heart. Okay, so it says review your benefits and see that they funnel to your portal. Okay, what do I got next here? Number three. Make it easy to perform routine tasks. Again, we're echoing what we said earlier, which is that all of these tasks that they can do independently, let them do it, right? We do this with our kids. If they can do it on their own, let them do it. It saves us time, it saves them time, and it's part of that engagement because if they know they can go to the portal to download an invoice or renew or whatever it is they're gonna do, once they're there, they're more likely to poke around, assuming you have a healthy user journey, assuming it's easy for them to do, right? Which is another workshop that's coming up. We can share the link in the chat. Um, I think some of my some of my girls here were at the last one, right? Um, Anita and Christina, but you're welcome to come back again. Happy to see you again. But yeah, we want it to be very easy for them to update these things there. And especially if you have like a, a profile, having a profile area in your portal um, where they know if they update it, it's like a mini, mini LinkedIn world within your association, right? But the LinkedIn profile is limited. It's structured the way they want it to. But you have your profile set up to feature and highlight what's amazing about your members. And then they can connect via those um, specifications. Okay. So independence for members saves time for your team. Win-win. Take stock of the FAQs, this is my little action item for you here, from your members and make sure they can do all related tasks on the portal. I really want to encourage all of you after this meeting, I don't know how big your associations are, but I want you to make an hour meeting, a half an hour meeting and invite anyone that has anything to do with customer service, the front desk, the membership team, the marketing team, and do a powwow until everyone, pardon me, have a meeting and encourage everyone to prepare what are the FAQs that you are getting from members. And if the, the questions that you see asked all the time, how do I renew? How do I join this event? How do I get the recording for this? How, how long until the recording is up on the portal? Whatever the FAQs are for you, all that information should be on your portal, super accessible. And that time should not be spent from your team. We really should have a tracking system to track the questions that come in via email and your team, you should not be paying dollars to your staff to answer the same questions all the time, right? You with me? Okay, good. Got it. What's next for us? So we want to create opportunities for members. Okay, so this word volunteer is a dirty word for some, a good word for others, but the idea here is if you can create in your portal professional opportunities that are, that are enriching and satisfying for your members, but in another vein, resume builders, right? You want to provide professional opportunities 
um, for people to feel fulfilled, but also feel growth. So if you have, if you create a mentorship program, if you create committees, if you have a peer review process, um, you can even have your members create film content, introductory content, benefit content for your portal. This is win, win, win. They are getting experience, they're getting um, resume building experience, and they're giving back feel good points and it's free staff and free opportunity for your for your members uh, for, for everybody. So um, I, I also want to encourage you to consider, please meet with us to discuss how to automate this as much as possible. I suggest this to clients all the time. They say we don't have the capacity to um, um, supervise and monitor a mentorship program. And I say, what are you talking about? You automate this within their profile. You say, I am interested in participating in a membership mentorship opportunity. I want to be a mentee. I want to be a mentor. And then they have to be able to find each other through a searchable database and they can approach each other. None of these things, a very little of these things should be maintained by your staff. You're giving them the freedom. You're going to treat them like adults. You're going to give them the independence and then they can find each other. Is this working for you guys? Oh, another question for Brian. Can the portal support new membership registration? Uh, so good question. The portal is the, um, the rope, the, 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 the access to members. So you want to have uh, your like a um, new membership approval process, the registration process would really be on your website. Um, some associations that we have worked with have an application approval process, right? So it's not just that you apply and you're in, it's an approval process. So they will have, for example, anyone who is an applicant will have access to a certain stage. They'll have, you know, like applicant access to the portal where they can log in and see their application status, but they will not see access to benefits. So this is a good example of what kind of content should be on the public side versus the private side. If it's hidden in the private uh, member portal, um, they wouldn't be able to see it because they're not yet members. So this is a good question. It should be on the public website. Does that answer your question, Ephraim? Yeah, I hope so. What's next for us? So um, we'll be offering these experiences for your members is free valuable benefits. And what I love about this is don't, it doesn't have to be on your shoulders, on your team's shoulders to create these free opportunities, these committees, um, these uh, you know opportunities for them to volunteer and connect. If you create a space where members can identify, can, can on their own say, hey, I wanna make a committee. Hey, I want a working group. Hey, I wanna create, I want uh, anybody who's in my city who wants to volunteer. Uh, with us today, um, having an opportunity that it's not just from the top down where you're providing opportunities, but you want the members themselves to feel empowered to add content and add opportunities, and then it's win-win all around. So you want to build a place on your portal where members can connect and join. Um, they can add their own opportunities, so then everybody wins. Okay, great. Thank you, Ephraim. So this is an example uh, from my boss, Farhad Khan, who you're going to hear from. He's very um, friendly and, and, and likes to connect with our uh, webinar attendees, that the um, he's part of the Association of Tech CEOs. And he was so impressed because right away when he joined, he was prompted, do you want an accountability partner? And um, he said, sure. And they paired him up with another new member. No, this is not like a mentorship uh, a program. It's like a peer support program. I call it like a, like, like a sponsor, like a, like a professional sponsor, you know, they, 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 they're here to support each other. So, um, but what they do is the program is designed, you know, meet at whatever cadence is good for you every two weeks, every month, every quarter, whatever you guys have time for. And you can even have within your settings, how often and how much time commitment you want to give to this and you decide with your partner. And then you like, you bounce ideas off each other. They brainstorm and they make commitments. And, oh, I'm going to make a commitment. When I see you in, in two weeks or in a month from now, you're going to see that I've done this. I'm going to report back to you. So it's sort of like having someone, you know, to impress, you know, that, but keep in mind these, this is the association of CEOs. They've got their, 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 their chest puffed up. They're ready to impress and they're very goal oriented. So this really works well for them that nobody's really supervising this. They're able to um, connect with each other. And when they report back and be 
you know, a little bit um, embarrassing for them to be like, well, I actually didn't do anything I committed to. They're, they're, they're trying to build their company. So this is a very, very good benefit that works really well within their, um, their ecosystem. Any questions about this? We're good? Okay, good. So moving on. Number five, when you're creating content, try to be strategic and create content that is what we call evergreen. Evergreen means it's always relevant. So if you make, you know, a checklist like, you know, like that, that's only specific for, you know, that season, that year, like if, if I, let's say I generated a whole lot of content around like COVID, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope two years from now, a year from now, we're not in the same situation. That content's really expired. It's not relevant anymore. So we really need to have a balance between meeting our members where they're at now, like, and really addressing and, and acknowledging where they are at now. We really want to spend, to be strategic about balancing our time that you're going to invest in content that is, that they're always going to need. And depending on your association, that'll be different, but you want to have guides, checklists, templates, databases, SOPs, um, search, um, things that are not going to expire, right? And, and the more they're able to search it and browse it easily, the more it'll be used. If it's just a list, a chronological list of updated content, it's very unlikely to be used. But as long as there's a search and you're creating content that they're going to they're gonna use. So like if every time you have a webinar, there's a checklist associated with it, that you implement ABC or there's an SOP and they can get started, um, it, really, it really helps them having these tools. Um, this is this is a, a a client that we're working with. I want to show you. We actually launched their portal yesterday. This is I've been using them as an example for months and months and months because I've been working on the project. But this has been really fun. I can tell you we announced we, we did this yesterday. We launched it, and I wanted to give you an example of of this. Um, uh, the people who were here before already. I don't know. I think I already showed you their portal. Maybe I only showed you their um, homepage. But here we are. We're logging to their portal, and I wanted to sort of show you where on those you know. Um, levels of engagement, that pyramid, people are able to engage. So here they are, they log in. Hi, Abdul. Hi, hi, Christina. It says their name here. They have member announcements here. They can add their events. They have their resources. And, um, and they can really engage at all those levels. So at that bottom level where it's the, um, uh, what do we call it, operational, they go over here to my membership. And in my membership, they can see how much credit they have. Let's say they uh, got a bonus code or they overpaid or whatever it is, or there's a change in their fees. Um, when their membership expires, um, renew their membership, view their payments, uh, get their invoices. Here they can update their account, update their address, change password, change preferences, and whatever fields that are relevant for your association, you would customize this. Um, within that uh, connecting with other people, we have here this public profile. They can add any information they have to the fields that are relevant for them. This person does not have a lot of content here. I wanna show you how many fields there really, really are that they can populate. They can add links, they can add books, they can achievements, awards, identity. They can add all kinds of content here, remove it, add it. And where all of this goes, this goes into um, a searchable, like a searchable database. Like you want your members to be able to find each other. They can find, uh, by, by geographically, by interest, by maturity level. I mean, you would set this up for you. This is how they wanted it set up. Um, and then here, just to show you, this links to their public site. So if at any point they wanna go back to the public site, they can go here, log out, donate, et cetera, uh, browse events. Um, here's an upcoming webinar that they have. I mean, you would have as many upcoming events as you have here. They only have one populated here and back to that homepage. But I want you to see that they are not focused on a lot of content. And by, and by that, I mean, this is not an overwhelming menu. There are no drop downs here. We just want it to be very clear and easy. What do they want? They want events. They know their clients want events and they want to be able to browse their benefits. Being able to browse benefits is key. This is where the engagement is. If your portal does not have this page, this will, and getting this page up and running and getting all your benefits on the site, you will really see uh, an uptick in your engagement. Let's jump back over to our, um, any questions about that? Any questions about the portal? Um, I'll go back into my presenter mode. 
Um, so yeah, so Writers Union of Canada, they came to us, they came to us originally for a workshop. We always start with a workshop. We really take the time to dive in. Who is your audience? What do they want? What are their goals? What's holding them back? What are their fears? And what are your resources? What can we do with them? And then we set a, a path for them. We originally only did changes to their current homepage. Um, we then had a plan to do a portal and now we're gonna be launching their public, their brand new public website. Um, in February, but just this idea of like creating a, a, a path and Rome wasn't built in a day, a few things every month that's going to really impress your members. And here's Gaby. Thanks to this workshop, we have a clear action plan um, of how to guide our next steps. So here's a little uh, bonus tip number six. I'm going to share it with you, but I'm going to share it to you with caution because it really, you have to really think about um, what's going to work for your audience. But the idea is that once you've built this gorgeous portal, it's there, it's amazing, and your members are using it, but maybe um, there's a way to create sort of um, a new access level where you use your portal as a marketing funnel. So if members are sort of like, first of all, if they're not clear what you're offering and what you're doing, we really need to revisit your site and like improve that user journey and improve how you're communicating your benefits. But you can set it up in such a way that you allow people, you know, a week, two week, whatever it is, access to the portal and possibly in a way where they can't engage, they can't sign up, they can't, but they can sort of like see the activity happening there. The problem with this, depending on your benefits, you don't want them to get the idea of like, oh, this is it. This is all that you have. You really have to have their um, content that is evergreen and that they're going to be like, wow, this I really see this being a resource for me. This is like my library or my grocery store or, you know, the, where I'm going to want to keep going back to because there is updated engagement here. So you have to sort of see how you could use the portal as a funnel. Um, you can do it free if you're really, really confident, if you have an engaged place and you really want people um, to see it because you're so proud of it. Even this word free, I would be very, very cautious about making it free because um, human nature is that we tend to devalue anything that's free. So even offering a tiny price tag, I'm not sure this is something worth exploring, but this is something that um, uh, I don't want to give the name of it, but a very, 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 very big association. They have honestly tens of thousands of members, and they're also in the position to offer this because they do have that membership and they do have that engagement, but they do this. They'll give people like a teaser um, that they can join for a few weeks and they can comment, they can engage, they can, they can do all the things that they wanna do. And then they can, and then they see that when their membership, uh, their trial membership ends, they continue to get emails with updates on where they engaged. So they can sort of like, so they see, oh, there is still activity and I wish I could still be involved there. It really works for them. This is an example. But yeah, there's all sorts of ideas that we can use depending on, on the kind of content and what your audience is into. Yeah, so here we are. We're coming up to the end here. A nice tight 40-minute uh, presentation. Um, we'd love to help you. We'd love to support you grow. We really work with associations every day to grow your membership and to reduce your member retention and to increase your member engagement. If anybody would like to meet with us, we'd be happy to um, meet with you uh, for 15 minutes to see if we can help you. Um, we offer a, um, I have here on screen here, a little, a little snapshot of what we, we do, but we really can go through with, we want to offer you, we want to support the good work that associations do. And just to sort of like do a little quickie audit of your site and your portal and see how easy is it for members to uh, get their content to renew to join to engage to comment to get their invoices to to um and on the flip side how easy is it to cancel it shouldn't be easy to cancel <laughs> they should have to jump through a few hoops and we can talk about that too um in member retention but uh, but yeah if anybody would like some help we'll share in the comments thanks ash for sharing that we'd love to hear from you and um, I'd love to hear from you now. You can come on mic and hear your impressions uh, of the presentations and then where you plan to go from here. I'd love to hear your takeaway thoughts about how you think um, a customized member portal could really help you and serve your, serve your team. Anybody want to share? Anybody feeling brave? So, um, if everybody's sticking around, I'm happy to keep talking. I, I, we are a tech company. I can talk to you about tech. Uh, many thanks. Oh, hi, Caris uh, uh, Carissa. Thanks for, thanks for joining. We'd love to hear from you. Come on, Mike, Carissa. Where are you from? What association are you with? 
Hi there. I'm with the Canadian Association of Radiologists in Ottawa. Oh, welcome. Um, I'm also hi. in Ottawa. We, <laughs> we actually have a member portal uh, and we do it through our website WordPress and it's connected to our database that feeds some of the field information through. Uh, we struggle a little bit with layout, how much is too much, how to unclutter so yes. that people can find what they want. Uh, we're also going through currently um, sort of a website redevelopment, and we've been going through workshops trying to identify who are our members, what do they want, because then right. that will drive us to make a better member portal. Um, we have a lot of different member benefits. One of the things that we have a hard time with, because we're interconnected with so many different pieces of technology that link everything together, right. we can't connect or do like a, an easy single sign-on between our owned products uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, which causes issues because members don't like to have to go somewhere else to then yeah. log in on something else and do that's other right. things so we, <laughs> that's one of our I guess our pain points is great we have all these technologies we're doing our best to automate a lot of things but we can't so, some of the things are not achievable based on a little bit sort of sometimes how we're set up or what it is we're trying to do. Uh, we did introduce this year though, auto renewal, and I am so excited about, about oh, that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's going to be a real winner. So, you know, we're just taking it to day by day, year by year, but uh, we're certainly uh, looking to have a, an improved member portal for a better experience and really highlighting what people need when they go in there. So if I may, I, um, I know that Christina and um, uh, uh, Linda, is that, is that, um, is that I, they, they already um, saw this demo a couple of weeks ago in a pre-seminar, but I'd love to show all of you our uh, product member lounge. This is the member benefit system that we've developed and that anybody can can purchase from us. It's not, it's not licensed, it's yours. I'll just, I'll just, if I may, I'll just take a few minutes to show it to you. Um, this is our product. Um, called Member Lounge. It is, you know, very similar in it's it's Tux really styled after it, and, and anybody can purchase this. Um, but this is a website called portal.gripe.ca. This is our demo site. Anybody can visit this uh, at home. You can visit this, and then we have here the admin login right here on screen, so that you can log in and um, and, and and test this yourself. But the idea here is that this is what you could purchase. You would brand it on your own. You could style it differently. You can add pictures. You can add color. You can add whatever you want. But we've really modeled this after what our experience tells us what membership, what members want to see without that cluttered experience. So it's very simple, very modern, very beautiful. We want, they want announcements. They want to know what's happening. And if you don't have announcements, this is hideable. You have upcoming events because what is membership? Membership is community. And even if they want to watch a video, even if they want to download something, in, they really can find that very easily online. They don't need to pay membership for that. So by highlighting your community first and how they can connect with people, this is really important. And if you look here, um, this will be called, I don't know if you see my browser where it ends in this, where my browser ends at the bottom here, this is called the fold, the fold. So you can scroll down to see what's below the fold and what's above. Anything that's below the fold is, is much less likely to be seen if anybody bounces your opportunity to connect with your audience is what's above the fold so if it's not above the fold it's not important if it's important it goes above it so what i'm showing my members is that i am telling you announcements you can connect with us and we got benefits for you so they can scroll down here this is a sampling of benefits and each of these tiles we have programmed we have set up to have a different functionality so there's like a searchable database you have your um uh, pub, you know, like uh, PDF download, you can turn this into a store and have this, you know, they can purchase it. I mean, I don't know if you're making your members purchase stuff. Um, you can have your uh, video recording library. Um, here you can have recordings for them to watch. Um, and you can have that donate button. You, if you do not, if you're not donation heavy, we recommend turning this into like a help button, where if you click this, this can then become a form where like, how do I do this? Or I have a question or I have a recommendation or whatever. And then they really feel they have like close communication with you. There's all sorts of ways you can customize this and build out uh, anything you want, right? So this is our baby, it's called Member Lounge. It's beautiful and it's completely ready for um, member benefit delivery. And 
associations that flip their focus to benefit delivery will see member members increase. Any thoughts on this, Carissa? This does look good. I do like, yeah, getting, see if sort of the announcements. I like the idea of that, but the management of it and making sure someone gets those announcements updated and that the upcoming events get fed off of somewhere that it's not siloed. This so all I'm happens I'm in here. This all <laughs> happens in here. I'm, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to log out and I'm going to do, um, this, this, I'm showing you what the uh, member sees, but I'm going to show you what the admin sees. Pardon me. I'm just going to grab the super admin here. I don't have the super admin on um, on on, the, on this page for the public, but I'm going to show I'm going to show you right now what it looks like. Yeah, we also have like our own website that has like an events listing. I would hate to have like to update two events places. I would love something yeah, that so you do it once this, somewhere and right. whoosh, it's everywhere. This talks to your website, so whatever is populated on one appears on the other, and whatever this this is completely integrated with your website. This isn't, this isn't separate. This that would is be great. Yeah. So like our clients also don't want to be populating two sites. No point putting two dates and two titles and do everything. But the idea here is if you would go here to content, add content, um, you can do here uh, event list. You would add, you could, you could, you could add pages, add events. And when you add an event here, it appears on the public site. If you add a benefit here, the teaser appears on the public site. I mean, you set it up as you want. But this completely communicates. You could you could have your um, public profiles, your public profiles in a searchable bank on your um, public website. This is it's this is not a silo. Carissa's thinking. <laughs> no, no, I, I think this is great. That would be wonderful to connect the website, the database, everything together. Yeah. One update spreads everywhere. It has we, a nice uncluttered look. Yeah, we have this connected. If you look up here with City CRM, you could connect this with Sumac, with Salesforce. I don't know what you're using, but the idea is that this site would connect with your database. And then whenever anybody here comes and changes their address, it's caught in, the, in your CRM. Whenever someone changes their address, it's caught in the CRM. If they, if they change their mail preferences, if they register for an event, it's recorded over here in City CRM. You would then go. Um, let me click here on City CRM. Um, if this is all Greek to you, if you're new here, I mean, it's there's just a different kind of database. But if you would go here, you would then be able to check in your reports: how many people registered for this event, uh, how many people attended, uh, your membership information, mailing. If you wanted people who have mailing preferences in their portal, it would go here. And then it would, you would send out mailings to only people with the mailing preferences they, spec they specified. And then here under contacts, you would, I'm just gonna, I'm like, where's my search? Search, let's search. Well, I'm just gonna click any one of these contacts. But the idea here is, um, ooh, where did I go? I'm gonna click this contact. Here you would see under their activities that they downloaded something, that they registered for something, okay? So this isn't a new thing to add. Like we work with associations, no one needs a new thing to add. The idea here is this works in harmony with your team, with your with your current staff. But this is really where the engagement's happening. What are you thinking, Carissa? I like the engagement piece because right now I choose stats. And I chew a lot of them. Me and spreadsheets are great friends. That's uh -huh. how we measure engagement stats, like spreadsheet upon spreadsheet. This is really quite nice. We're not looking for to make any changes ourselves immediately or within the next year, but this is definitely something that I can bring back to show oh my God, like all in one, it's all yeah. here. We don't have to, like, you know, get the glue stick out and, yeah. you know, yeah. paste everything together. We work with associations. We know the timeline works like, you know, it's a slow process, um, but yeah, like we're, we're here, like there's a lot of <sighs> template stuff on the market and we really wanted to ask ourselves where we can make a difference. And I want to tell you that we have set this up not to be licensed. You do not pay us monthly for this. We set it up and it's yours. It's your site and it's, you have the keys. So we still, I mean, we offer, we're a software company. We, we offer website 
maintenance packages every day, right? That's not a problem. But if ever you hired an in-house IT person or decided you didn't like the look of our faces and wanted somebody else, um, hopefully you would stay with us. But the idea is um, it's yours. And it's not that if you didn't like the product or didn't like us, you would have to leave and find something else, but this is really yours. So for us, I, I am not aware if I am wrong, if someone knows different, tell me. I, am, I have personally called dozens and dozens of similar products out there. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to name names. I'm being recorded, but they're, um, you pay monthly. And if you don't like them, if you don't like the service, you have to really consider a huge overhaul and asking your members to change to a new platform and people don't like change. But this is really a place where you can stay. It's yours. It's, and it's beautiful. And it's really never going to go out of style. I mean, like, it's very clear. This is completely mobile friendly. You can go to portal. Um, where was I? Uh, this is, I'm still in the, I'm still in the Twix site, um, portal. Right. You can go to this uh, URL from your phone, from your tablet and see it's tablet friendly. It's mobile friendly. What about you, Abdul? I Any thoughts? Well, I need to hear, I've got a question. I'm Where's watching Anita? and listening and see how we can, when in fact it was quite informative. Oh, good. Um, well, problem I, is nowadays people with a minimal membership fee, they will say, okay, I have paid my membership fee. Then in, I'm talking about nonprofit organization. There is no real commitment from members to be present. And, and it also applies to the equally applies to the board members as well, that they show very little commitment. They will take on the responsibility. But I'm sorry to hear uh, that. We got to get yeah. you new board members then. <laughs> well, I'm with a number of organizations and the same experience everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we no actually we have um this this uh, webinar is on about our podcast, but we have an amazing, amazing podcast where we interview like experts in the association world. And we have a podcast recording on our website about a nonprofit governance expert. And she, we have, it's with, um, what's her name? Christina Becker, Christina Becker. And she said, associations do not do enough to vet their board members. They're just so happy to fill the butts in the seats, but we should really have a training process and a vet process and people who are really hungry to make change. That's a different topic. We should do lunch and talk about it. But Anita, I wanna to get to your question. Well, I have two. First of all, we have a portal, but we're doing it through our uh, uh, website um, and using eMember. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's compatible with WordPress, right? Okay. So, uh, like, do we have to switch if we were to go with Gripe? Do we have to switch to uh, the one you were talking about, CRM? Does it cost? Yeah, so it's a very good question. Yeah. You're, you're using eMember as your CRM? Yeah. Okay. There's so many out there. I honestly, I've been doing this for so long. I never even heard of this eMember. I'm going to look into it. So I'll, I'll answer your question this way. The answer is absolutely not. You would integrate this with whatever you want. And in fact, if you weren't even ready for integration and you just wanted a member, we have associations who do not even have member portal. They need this up and running yesterday. So we can get this set up and then you can worry about tracking and metrics. We can set that up in the long term, right? So that's, we sort of have to figure out what's the priority for your association. If you already have something set up and there's sort of like a process that we could do like to, to get things working right for you. Basically, you do not need this set up with a CRM. You can, if you wanna do metrics and tracking and reporting, which is ideal, we would want all of our associations to get there. Regarding which one you would use, I'll answer you this way. We are city CRM consultants. We're partners with theirs. We're experts in city CRM. All of these CRMs, whether it's Sumac or Salesforce, or they're, they're so deep and so wide and they're so complicated to really answer all the questions. What we, what we say is that we can offer you tech support for city CRM. We cannot easily offer tech support for eMember or any other platform, right? So if you chose to attach this to eMember and you guys know eMember and you trust their you know, support team or however you get support, then yeah, then go, then go with that. If you were unhappy with eMember and you were ready for a change, then it's worth discussing, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to come with this. It's not like the two together. Yeah. 
Well, the reporting is one of our issues because you know we we have to maintain a manual database as well as the online database because we can't get the stats <clears throat> that we need uh, in the current makeup. But we also oh. are very like we have a deficit and don't have much of a budget now. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best route to Ooh. go. The other concern is uh, we're using QuickBooks, but not QuickBooks online because my bookkeeper has told me that uh, it doesn't always capture things accurately. It's a real headache. And once you go to online, you can't transfer back to you know desktop. And so we're doing separate receipts. We're doing, you know, everything is, you know, we're, we're, the silos are there for us. We have to do everything manually and it's, it takes a great deal of time. Wow. So, yeah, so, you know, we need a solution. Uh, SUMAC is offering on, and that's information for other people on this site too, it, it is offered on TechSoup Canada as uh, a, for a very low, price uh, for the first year and then after that you have to pay uh, yeah. but I'm I'm trying to figure out okay do I want to go to something that I don't know how do I know they're going to give me everything I need yeah uh, and then I don't want to move all our members over as you said people don't like change and it's also a lot of change for for us and we're yeah. only two part-time staff so these are my quandaries you know have you had experience with QuickBooks being a problem for people because the reviews online are pretty bad too. For QuickBooks? Yeah, QuickBooks online. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I don't. I'm the. I'm the engagement person, the financial person. You can book a call with our with with Farhad, the CEO. I mean, the link is in the chat. We can share it again. We're happy to meet you. You're a part-time staff member. Um, yes, Anita. And okay. Yes. Anita. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, lots to think about in terms of finding the right product for you. I can just say I have a spreadsheet, spreadsheet this big and this wide of all of my competitors. And I have spoken with all of them and combed their website to really see what's missing on the market. And what I see is none of them do everything. None of them do everything. Some of them you know, work in the US, but not Canada. Some of them can't do international. Some of them can't do multilingual. Some of them can't do um, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, yeah. they each have limitations. So I think we really have to focus on what are the key tasks we need to do day to day? What key tasks we have to do to operate? What key tasks do our members need to do? And like focus on the key tasks. I can tell you that um, I work with Civi CRM. I see limitations with Civi CRM, but our clients come to us because they are unhappy with. I don't want to give names, but like you know, products that you've that they have been mentioned here or elsewhere, they're 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 ready they're ready to do this big transition because they are unhappy. So, but maybe um, it's it's a big it's a big. Uh, that's why we do the workshops, right? We have workshops we offer for our clients. We meet with them three-part series, we really dig deep into really identifying priorities. And when we when we have to justify our priorities and we make you do research, we make you find your data, we make you do interviews with your members, we're often very surprised at the number of assumptions that we make about our members. And if we would really take the time to listen and not go from our gut, but go from our data and really, because what members say is different than what they do. We see this every day. Right. What members yeah. will say, I really want something and then they don't actually participate in what they're asking for. So it's yeah. very important to, um, you know, look with our eyes as in the data rather than listen with our ears. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Ephraim? I had some good questions from you. Anything from you? Ephraim, you want to come on mic? Not today. What about you, Christina? Where's your head at? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to go back and bring this back to my team. Uh, I know we're going to be wanting to update our website in the coming year and uh, really having a, a membership portal is pretty good. And I really liked what, what was mentioned that you can possibly integrate with the, like if, people, if a member updates their uh, 
information that can be automated through a database system like Salesforce. So that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. And it saved me a lot of time too. So, <laughs> so we are not Salesforce experts though. We would not, Oh yeah, no, no. like, you know what I mean? Like we could do all the work on CRM, but like you can, you can integrate this wherever you want. But we, I have like, um, like a fact sheet about member lounge. If you'd like it, I can email it to you. I could share it with you. Um, whatever you want, you know, I know how associations work. It's a slow game, uh, but we're here for you when you have any questions. Okay, for sure. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. Oh, if I mentioned the not able apologies. Okay. If I hope you learned something and hopefully we'll see you'll meet me in a call. So we can, uh, we can help you grow your membership. I want to thank everyone for coming and maybe we'll see you at the next time. See you at the next um, podcast in a few weeks. Bye.